Alright, today I'm doing a short video. I think it'll be short. I'm hoping it'll be a short one. Uh, I'm skipping, so short really, that I'm skipping the intro. Also because I think I'm supposed to not curse for a certain amount of time in order to pass some kind of algorithmic thing. This is, uh, you know what, I don't, see this will just eat up time. I don't want to get into why all that is really stupid for right now. Other than the fact that I really don't think the, the name of my show really should be a curse word at this point. Can we retire that one as a curse word? Who looked at a pile of crap and went, look, you can call this anything but one word. What, what, what is with this forbidden fruit combination of letters we are not allowed to use to describe a pile of crap? Other than the fact that the one I'm not supposed to say is, oddly enough, the only one that doesn't sound infantile and stupid and somehow even more gross. But what I think I can do is actually set up uh, today's uh, video that I'm going to be picking apart. Well, not really picking apart. That's going to be the that's the wrong way to put it. Uh, expanding on is more like it. Today I'm talking about Cineranter's uh, video on Carlito's way and the fatal mistakes Carlito Brigante made in this movie. First off, uh, I love this channel. I think it's the same guy that does Bully Whispers, if I remember correctly. I know they sound the same and they do virtually the same content. Either way, uh, I love both channels. The content's great. I'm not sure if he's done with Carlito's Way, but I've seen this video several times. I'm hoping he does more content on Car Carlito's Way. But uh, actually, you know what I would really love for him to get into, not to get sidetracked? Sons of Anarchy. I don't know what his feelings are on that show. That would be... I would love to hear his character analysis of people like Tig or Clay and how all that shit worked. Damn it. There, there it goes. Because I hope two minutes is the appropriate number of minutes I'm supposed to be able to go before dropping a dreaded S-bomb. But you know what? Since I did it, Let's go ahead and do it. Welcome to... Eat shit and die, Ricky! I'm southern white trash. I can't help it. That's how we talk. Asking us not to throw the word shit and fuck around like it's nothing is... It's like asking a, a Spanish person not to say papi or mano. What the fuck? What are you doing? Handicapping my language? I also don't go over this nonsense that cursing a lot makes you sound unintelligent. I think you sound twice as stupid trying to cash in 50 cent words to describe a 25 cent object. As if we don't know you spent all night looking through a thesaurus trying to find a six syllable word for ant. I would say if anything, that's a dead giveaway for the fact that you're desperate for us to not know how stupid you actually are. Guys who drop f-bombs every other word can build an entire car out of scratch. A university professor can't doesn't curse at all. He can't even change a fucking tire. So I guess that really just depends on how you measure intelligence. But anyway, back to um, back to Cineranter. All right, so this is an awesome video that he did on Carlito's Way. I'm just happy somebody's talking about Carlito's Way. That's a great movie. I don't know if I would put it in. Pacino's top 10, but it is definitely number one on the list of best Sean Penn performances. Okay, so anyway, why I'm talking about the Cineranter video is because I've seen it like five times. It's a great video. It's about all the mistakes Carlito made uh, leading up to his inevitable demise. I, I would certainly hope that if you clicked on a video with uh, about any movie that you've seen the movie. All right. So enough bullshit. Let's let's get to it and uh, start picking apart this video. Well, picking apart or picking it apart sounds unfair. It sounds like I'm really being critical of it. I really just want to expound on it. I think there's a, uh, as uh, Carlito says, more angles to be seen. And I feel like unless he's saving this for a different video about Carlito, or uh, Carlito's way, then. I could be wrong, but I feel like he missed something. Michael Francesi missed the same thing in his review of this movie, so now I really feel the need to point it out. But Cineranter does the best breakdown, and if he is seeing this, I'm sure he's eager by now at the five-minute mark of the video for me to get to the fucking point.
In Brian De Palma's Carlito's Way, we follow Al Pacino, who plays Carlo Briganti, a former gangster who's done a five-year stint in jail, five years out of a 30-year sentence. Out early thanks to his lawyer and friend Dave Kleinfield, Carlito decides he's had enough of the gangster lifestyle and wants out, telling those who wish to suck him back into the life that he's retired and wants nothing to do with the game. He has a dream, a vision, of leaving NYC with the love of his life Gale to the Caribbean and renting out cars. Before that, he needs to raise 75k. But Carlito's environment dooms him, forces him back into the world of crime, deceit and corruption. A young up-and-coming gangster, Benny Blanco from the Bronx, wants to warm up to Carlito, maybe even work on a new racket with him. But Carlito wants nothing to do with him, and when Benny gets heavy, Carlito threatens his life and has him thrown out of his club. Then there's Kleinfield, coked out of his mind and later revealed to have been willing to sell Carlito out to the cops. This moron decides to rip off a mob boss and then kills him and his son, getting Carlito wrapped up in the affair, leading us to the film's climax, where our protagonist races to the train station, trying to outrun the Italian mobsters after him for the killing on the boat. He succeeds in doing so, seconds away from escape, finally, but at the last moment is tragically taken out by Benny Blanco of all people, who Carlito, in a twisted irony, allowed to live as part of his new outlook on life. Today- Okay, here's the, the first angle I think Cineranter uh, Bully Whispers may have overlooked, or didn't, is uh, Carlito didn't really reform. So there's a big difference between having a new outlook on life and a new lease on life and not wanting to go back to prison. Carlito wasn't changing, he just didn't want to go back to prison. And that's kind of the through line of all of, all of uh, the fatal mistakes that Cineranter points out. Now, from purely a street guy perspective and how he handled his business dealing with people on the streets, Bully Whisp Cineranter is absolutely spot on in the analysis. Minus uh, the fact that both him and Michael Franzese, for that matter, or Francis, however you say his name. It looks like Franchese. But either way, both of you seem to be forgetting about Norwalk, or Norwal, the DA. What were his last words to Car uh, Carlito in the courtroom? I'll be seeing you, Brigante. And here's the thing. This guy's... The reason Carlito's out is because this guy obtains evidence illegally. So... Both of, both in both assessments of how all these mistakes he made, other than just not going back to the barrio, that's actually his first mistakes. He shouldn't have even went back to that neighborhood at all. But that's where everybody you know is. I mean, what the fuck else are you going to do? Or are you going to go somewhere completely new with no money, criminal record? Yeah, good luck getting a job. Yeah, I just got out of the joint for 30 years. Oh, yeah, I used to be a, you know, crime lord in New York. Now I'm here in Milwaukee. You know, trying to sell sport, sporting good equipment. Just did five years in the joint. Almost 30. Yeah, I got family I want to see. They all live in the neighborhood I got busted in. I mean, well, you know, what are you going to do? Today, I wanted to discuss if Carlito could have escaped, or whether he was always destined to meet his demise ever since he came out of prison. And the way I wanted to do this was to examine key mistakes Carlito made throughout the film. And he made a lot. Of course, Hindsight is 2020. It's easy for us to criticise him when we can now, as he would say, see all the angles. And there are multiple ways to deal with the situation and you never know how something is truly going to work out. So it's easy for us to say. And also, Carlito making mistakes makes sense. He really was losing his edge, in a manner of speaking. He stopped being able to see all the angles and this came with the attempt to change his ways. Still though, Looking back at the film, Carlito could have handled several situations differently. Even his entire philosophical outlook on life, the new way of doing things, was massively flawed. On one hand, he's a joint owner of a connected club. He hires a guy he used to work with in the old days, Panchanga, as his muscle. He mingles with crooks and criminals wanting to get a quick and fast amount of cash. And meanwhile, he's going around telling everyone he's retired. It's enough to make other gangsters suspicious or at the very least bemused. Not to mention annoyed. I mean, I'm just expounding on his point here, not not really uh, arguing it. But yeah, what Carlito's doing, like hanging around these gangsters, but not in the life. It, it's like hanging out with a guy that used to drink, had to quit drinking, 
because he was a lunatic. And now he wants to preach to everybody else about how they need to stop drinking. And everybody else is an addict. So you have an addiction. It's like, no, dude, I drink, I drink one beer on the weekends, one or two beers, and I nurse them. You're the one who drove home with a little girl's foot in your grill. Get out of my face. Quit trying to shame me. It, whether he realizes it or not, it's like he's looking down on them. That's the feeling, the vibe they get out of this guy after a while. You can only be around somebody like that so long before you feel a little, uh, or it's a little demeaned. And that kind of hits gangsters where they live because they're really into respect. They, they demand respect. They feel entitled to respect. But kind of like the guy who has to use gigantic words for simple things, they don't deserve respect. They really don't. That's why they demand so much of it. But like in Pulp Fiction, he's like kind of trying to calm Vincent Vega down, and he's like, and Jules is like, I don't mean any disrespect. You know I respect you. And what if he was to come in here and see a towel like this, Vincent? It's shit like this that's going to bring this situation to a head, man. Look, I ain't threatening you or nothing, all right? You know I respect you and all. Really? What do you respect this dumb motherfucker for? Certainly can't be his merit badge in firearm safety. Down from heaven and stop it. Oh, fuck up, man. Oh, man. Oh, man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the fuck you do that? One of the biggest mistakes Carlito makes is letting Lalin go, the guy in the wheelchair who flipped and was wearing a wire. If he did it privately, which to be fair, it did look like he did do initially, that's a different story. But once Panchanga burst into the room, Lalin had to go. But instead... Carlito stops his muscle from killing Lalin. What kind of message does that send to Panchanga? Actually, letting Lalin go was the smartest thing he did. And he here's why. Norwalk sent Lalin in there with a wire, specifically to try to catch Carlito dealing heroin again. If Lalin goes in there alive and comes out dead, that pretty much just hands Norwalk a murder case on Carlito Brigante. That actually works out better than if he had went in on this deal with Aline to sell cocaine or whatever it was. As for the message it sends Pachanga, it's been quite a few months now that Carlito has been out and you he's hired you on at a club that he's running legitimately and he's hired you, Pachanga, in a legitimate position as a bouncer. That's a legitimate job. He's been saying nonstop he said it one he said it a hundred times if he said it once. I'm retired. I'm out of the game. I'm not in the life anymore. Why can't Pachanga understand this? I mean, how many more ways and more times can he say it? Does he not know the English word for retired? Should he have it written in Braille and stuck up his ass? Still going around the club going, guys, I'm out of the game, spread the word. A except when it comes to Pachanga, if you see him, keep that under your hat. I think when Pachango was talking about when you first meet him and he's talking about like these kids today they got no respect for human life man they shotgun you just to watch you fly up in the air but Mr. Chacho you better off in jail he's actually talking about himself like that's who he's become the guy that likes to shotgun people just to watch him fly up in the air and this is also really stupid on Pachanga's part because I mean as far as the whole betraying Carlito because well for more than one reason but mostly, he was leaving. Not that Pachanga knew this, but he was leaving. If Pachanga had just held on a little bit longer, just take Gale to the train station, and when he let, once he's gone and he's out and he's reestablished, who do you think he's gonna leave that club to? Kleinfeld is dead. Sasso tried to steal his money earlier. If Pachanga had just remained loyal. He probably would have inherited that club. He would have squandered it, no doubt, because he's apparently uh, too dumb to understand uh, retired from gangster life. I guess the concept just doesn't even register in this dude's head whatsoever. What? What? You're not a gangster? I don't even get that. What? What? Do you, it's like you said. I don't breathe oxygen anymore. What? How is that even possible? Now we have to talk about the Benny Blanco situation. Sure, there are reasons why Carlito doesn't give Benny the satisfaction and acknowledge him. He thinks he's a young, dumb punk. He's turned off by his attitude. He has his pride and doesn't want to be seen as an equal to this guy. And Benny reminds him of himself. 
But Carlito was uncharacteristically rude to Benny just before things get physical. The thing is, you're saying you're out of the game, you're retired. Then act like it. Tip your hat to those who are in the game, especially the ones who are already giving you respect. It's like in The Wire. When Cutty is in the game, he speaks to Avon direct. After he leaves and wants to speak to Avon about the gym, he goes through Bodhi because he doesn't think it's appropriate to speak to Avon directly without getting the okay. He's not in the game anymore. Similarly, Carlito is singing and dancing about how he is out, and yeah, sure, he still commands respect and isn't exactly a civilian, but he needs to start giving some respect to the up-and-comers. Acknowledge him. That may have been all Benny wanted. Feed his ego a little. Accept his champagne bottle so he can tell his little friends he broke bread with the great Carlito Brigante. Put your ego to a side. If you're out, you're out. And you have to tip your hat to those in the game, whether you like them or not. Carlito could have solved a lot of problems just simply by sitting down for two minutes and having a drink with this with this asshole and indulging him. So yeah, when you watch this movie on repeat viewings, knowing what the outcome is, it's like, yeah, man, would it really have killed you to sit down and have a drink with this guy? But actually, yes, it would. Because of Norwalk. Like, you're in a club full of people. You got a DA that's just waiting for the first opportunity to throw your ass back in jail. Again, he's not reformed. He's scared of jail. Norwalk, there's a possible Norwalk plant in that club at all times just watching Carlito. If he sits down at the table and starts talking to Benny Blanco from the Bronx, you remember uh, Gribbs and Goodfellas? Guy's 70 years old, he's gonna die in prison just for saying hello to some guy going behind his back selling junk. He's like James Woods in Cat's Eye. Yeah, he wants to smoke a cigarette, but if he does, Quitters Incorporated is gonna rape his wife. The consequences are gonna be so immediate and severe that it's not worth it. And Norwalk is just like Quitters Incorporated, and Benny Blanco is like having Joe Camel sitting in front of him just blowing cigarette smoke in his face going, come on man, just try one. Goes down smooth. I get, get it out of my fucking face. I think once he was out of there and actually made it to the Bahamas and opened his car rental place, which, by the way, was he was going to be doing that with another convict, so I'm pretty sure things would have come up. Benny Blanco from the Bahamas could probably get an audience out of Carlito. He'd probably do business with him. Because Norwalk's not in the fucking Bahamas. Uh, the observation that uh, Benny Blanco reminds Carlito of himself, a younger version of himself, I think that's true too, but I don't, I don't think it affects him the way that that kind of implies. I think the problem Carlito has with Benny Blanco from the Bronx is that I think he's actually afraid he would like Benny if he spent time with him. And that would be worse than having beef with him. In Carlito's particular situation now in New York, that's worse than... Uh, having a beef with him even though it does get him killed and the temptation to do a little business with Benny just to get that 75,000 together faster is something he doesn't want either and once things escalated to this beef and they got Benny Blanco into this back room and it was just him and Benny Blanco there actually is a third option here squash the fucking beef if you're not gonna kill him which would be the sensible thing to do Kind of, but again, Norwalk. If Norwalk's people saw him have this altercation with Benny Blanco, Benny Blanco shows up dead, so then bam, right back to Carly. Not because they care about Benny Blanco, not even because killing Benny Blanco, it's just a, an excuse to stick Carlito right back in the can, which is what he's more afraid of. He's more afraid of going back to prison than he is of getting killed by Benny Blanco. But once they were, they were back here and it was just the two of them, a little honesty might have helped Carlito here. He just said, look, kid. Just say, look, kid, I'm glad you're showing me respect, but I don't, I can't be part of your business for two reasons. A, number one, I ain't fucking interested. I'm out of the life, so I don't care. Two, you don't want me as part of your organization. I was supposed to do 30 years. I got out in five because of my lawyer. The DA's pissed about it. He's so far up my ass, I'm tasting Brill Cream. I would be a liability to you. You don't want me sitting at your table any more than I want to be sitting at your table. You understand? I think maybe Benny then would get it. Us not beefing in public is bad for both of us. It's bad for you. It's bad for me. Got it? 
And if he still keeps going on about it, I'm gonna fucking kill you, motherfucker. Then you tell Pachanga, all right, you know what? Get this piece of shit out of here and make sure I don't see him again. That's it. You ain't got to go along with it. You ain't got to kill him. You ain't got to do it personally. Pachanga will do it. Just give Pachanga enough verbal cues. Then again, he seems to not understand that Carlito is not a crime boss anymore either. So I don't know if Pachanga takes vague directions very well, but get... Make sure I don't ever see this piece of shit again. That's enough to let you know, kill this motherfucker. And then Benny Blanco's killer's Pachanga, not you. You just kicked him out of the club. Pachanga's the one that kicked him off the planet. But the thing is, Carlito is checked out in New York. He doesn't care. He's leaving in a couple months. He doesn't give a shit. Fuck Benny. If Benny's mad at me, who gives a fuck? I'm not going to be here much longer anyway. Well, we know that's stupid in retrospect, and we know it was stupid because it's a movie. Put yourself in Carlito's position without the benefit of uh, hindsight. This really wasn't a stupid call. It was wrong, but it wasn't stupid. I mean, think about it. What is the relationship that Carlito knows between Benny Blanco and these two men? Well... Sasso's the one who is going, why don't you like this guy? I don't understand, Carlito. He's the one that keeps talking him up. He's the one that keeps borrowing money from him. He's the one who keeps stealing money from you to pay him. You also took his club. Sasso might not really like that. He might want his club back. Sasso really has more motivation to be helping Benny Blanco than Pachanga. Pachanga, last time... Carlito saw these two guys together. Pachanga's practically gluing his underwear to his leg. He's so excited to kill this guy. Pachanga laid an ass whooping on this dude last time they were together. Last time Carlito saw them together. Carlito really underestimates how stupid Pachanga really is. I mean, look, you beat a guy up, you're itching to kill him, and then somewhere between that moment, you decide to go into his territory and go hey look man I want to work for you that takes a combination of balls of steel and shit for brains I guess Pachanga qualifies as both but whenever Carlito was going like like moves a couple ounces thinks I gotta respect him fuck him Pachanga goes yeah fuck him but he's looking over at that table like ounces I think they're a big shot make a few bucks while I'm in a joint I gotta respect it. Fuck that. Yeah, fuck that shit. Come on. They go like, yeah, fuck, I want to work for this guy. And really, if he wanted to work for Benny Blanco, that would have been the moment to go do it. But instead, he decides to keep hanging around Carlito, who's out of the game. Of course, nobody tells Pachanga that. But really, you take all that into account, in Carlito's position, really, which one of these two guys is liable to go fuck you over for Benny Blanco? Which one would you pick with the information Carlito had? But it's the same with the Benny Blanco situation. He's got one foot out of New York already, so his investment in any future beyond that 75, 000, hitting that $75,000 mark is non-existent, so he doesn't care. All right, now let's get to Kleinfeld. You know, for as many times I've seen this movie, and Kleinfeld is my favorite character in this flick, but if you had asked me before doing, uh, I did this analysis, I would have told you Kleinfeld was the biggest piece of shit in the entire movie. But when you stop and think about it, not really. Kleinfeld actually never wronged Carlito. Actually, Carlito fucked Kleinfeld. Twice. Once on accident, once on purpose. See, there's a deleted scene in this movie that takes place directly after... Uh, the club scene. This would be like scene four. <laughs> Move, though, <no> careful. <laughs> because, you know, I heard some shit about you. Look at this. Some shit? What kind of shit? You know, some shit. Like, stuff. And all with the... Like how you made guarantees to people and then didn't deliver, that kind of thing. Got some mom guy mad at you. These mom guys don't impress me. I'll tell you something. I've got these fucking guys on their knees. 
my office. Yeah. Begging me to take their cases. Let okay. me try this. Now, if you're good at what you do, if you're good at what you do, you got everybody mad at you on both sides. That's the job. That's the job. I've been around a long time. Let me tell you something. I'm saying this to you now. Watch your back, baby. And this scene establishes a lot. One, that Carlito is staying with Kleinfeld and presumably stayed with him all the way up until this incident with his cousin where he ended up getting 30 grand. He spent 25 of it getting into uh, buying into the club. Presumably the other five was used to get himself his own apartment. It also establishes that uh, Kleinfeld already ripped off Tony T. Kleinfeld's plan was to get Carlito out. Carlito was going to go back to work and uh, Redondo's crew or whatever go back to being Carlito motherfucker to the max Brigante and uh, then he was going to have protection from that crew he was going to be the lawyer of Redondo personal friend of Carlito that was what he was banking on being his protection from uh, Tony T and his crew but that's not what happened this is the first time Carlito fucked him because Carlito went straight that was a little unexpected uh, from Kleinfeld. Even when they're leaving the courtroom, that was some line of crap you handed him. No, it wasn't. This scene also establishes uh, Kleinfeld's uh, feelings toward these mob guys like Tony T. And I do think some of that rubs off on Carlito because, look, you could sit there and laugh at this goofy, Larry Fine-looking motherfucker trying to act like he's not impressed by Wise. Like, yeah, these guys don't impress me, okay? Well, yeah, it's goofy when he's saying it, but he is right. Regardless of the source of this information, between almost doing 30 years in jail and then being told right after that by a guy that you, you could have rolled on and made it easier for yourself and didn't. A guy you did the thing that everybody on the street is supposed to honor you for doing says in the most condescending, dismissive and shitty manner uh, I ain't paying you for that even though you did me a huge favor. I've done very well because you kept your mouth shut but uh, I, I hope you don't think I owe you anything you piece of shit. Actually I, I wasn't here to ask for anything other than to tell you, yeah, I'm retired, I'm out, so don't come asking me for shit. But, yeah, I mean, now that you bring it up, now that I think about it, yeah, you do owe me some money, motherfucker. Laline taught him the lesson that there's no such thing as a stand-up guy. And for good reason. As R Renando will tell you, I have no gratitude for it whatsoever. There's no reward in being a stand-up guy, so why do it? The life is actually a pretty stupid way to live. So Carlito really doesn't respect it. I don't know, maybe it's a misfucking understanding here. I don't know, man. Maybe you don't remember me. My name is Benny Maybe Benny's I don't uncle. give a shit. Maybe I don't remember the last time I blew my nose either. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? I should remember you. Huh? What, you think you like me? You ain't like me, motherfucker. You a punk. I've been with made people. Connected people. Who you been with? Chain snatching. Jive ass, Monaco motherfuckers. Somebody out here, aren't you? Wait till you hear the words 30 years punctuated with a gavel slam. We'll see how tough you are then. You a stand up guy or are you gonna start ratting too? And even if you are a stand up guy, you're a fool. Carlito's slowly learning what Kleinfeld already knows, which is there is only one rule you save your own ass. Kleinfeld is right about that. Kleinfeld has a front row seat. To every one of these tough guys, the guys that bully you on the street, the guys like Benny Blanco who think they're hot shit, he's got front when they break. He's there when they start crying. He's there when they're begging for his help. He's there when they rat. Yeah, there's a street code, but it ain't real. It all comes down to one thing. Save your own ass. And see, Kleinfeld can say the same thing, but when he says... I've, I'm with made guys, connected guys. He's talking about the governor. He's talking about judges, senators, congressmen. Those are connected guys. Those guys actually matter. Who you, Who's Carlito been with? 
made guys. Dudes respected by idiots like Pachanga and Benny Blanco. And connected to who? The richest, most evil guy in a third world country? And with the exception of Carlito, they treat him like shit. Like he's some kind of pushover schmuck. This is why he has a disdain for street guys, particularly Italians. As far as he's concerned, they should be kissing his feet. And he's right. He's the one that can get him out of all this trouble. That's why he ripped off Tony T. It's not because he's greedy. I mean, that's a factor, I'm sure, in a lot of why he does what he does. But really, ripping off Tony T was to say, hey, you know what? Fuck you. But Carlito gets out. He's out of the life. So that plan backfires. But unlike the rest of the gangsters that he deals with, Carlito's actually grateful. For real grateful. He's your real friend because of this. So, is, has a, has a dream, some kind of goal that he's gonna go to the Bahamas with this, and meet up with this other ex-con and run a car rental joint. He just needs 75 grand to buy into this business. Dave, uh, gets him into this, running this nightclub, running it legitimate and clean. And Carlito keeps up his end of the bargain because, for the mo aside from the fact that gangsters drink there, he is running it legit and clean. So Kleinfeld, on top of getting him out of a 30-year prison sentence, has given him the means, legal means, to legally earn money to get him closer to his renting cars in Bahamas dream. So, like, when... Uh, Michael Friend sees says uh, that you don't owe him anything when you don't owe anybody anything who's trying to drag you back down into the life. Yeah, he's right in every case except this one. I got suspicious. I found out he was back with Rolando Rivas, his old partner, dealing coke. And I'm talking serious numbers. Would you testify to that? Absolutely. It's not really a betrayal. I know it looks bad, but it's not really a betrayal. See, David Kleinfeld knows the law. He understands it the, w the way Carlito understands the street. Carlito doesn't understand how the law works. He understands the law as well as Kleinfeld evidently understands the politics of, you know, the streets. He has a vague conception of it. But the thing is, Carlito's not dealing. Nothing... Kleinfeld accused Carlito of doing is true. So if Norwalk goes to look in, into it, he's not going to find anything. He's going to hit a dead end. He can't prosecute Nor uh, Carlito for a crime that Carlito's not committing. And even if Carlito was committing the crime, like, say, killing Benny Blanco, he, even if Norwalk can read it, that situation with his eyes shut, like the Italians do, he still has to prove it, and prove it, prove it, really prove it, beyond reasonable doubt prove it. And the more Norwalk badgers an innocent man trying to get him convicted of crimes he's not committing, the more ammunition David Kleinfeld has in a lawsuit uh, against the Norwalk and the district attorney's office for harassing his client. See, in a common sense world, it really wouldn't matter how Norwalk got the tapes that put Carlito down for 30 years anyway. The tapes are still there. It's still evidence. But in the silly-ass world of a courtroom, everybody knows he's guilty, but goddammit, Norwalk, you broke the rules on how you proved it. Sorry for wasting your time, Mr. Brigante. You're free to go. It's a tragedy that you're walking out of here a free man, but Norwalk fucked up. That is the ridiculous world law that Dave plays in. We got the guy. Aw, oh, fuck it. It didn't notarize the search warrant. God damn it. All right, Mr. Kruger, you're free to go. Don't forget your creepy razor glove. You're going to need it to murder more children. Hopefully we do the paperwork right next time when we catch you. All right, good luck to you, buddy. Even if Norwalk played the tape in court of David Kleinfeld telling him that Carlito was, uh, you know, on the street selling again, that would look bad. But the fact that he said, you're not taping this, are you? And Norwalk said, no, of course not. 
that actually might make the tape and I don't know how the laws necessarily work in New York what the third party consent laws are but that tape is useless or it, that tape is useless in a courtroom just because of that so the only thing he could do to make any use of that conversation would be to play it for Carlito out of context and also yeah it is imposing on Carlito's life to do this to possibly get Norwalk disbarred but that that's really just because Kleinfeld's comfortable in a courtroom arguing and doing all this shit nobody else wants to ever be in a courtroom ever it's a bad day when you're in court unless you're Kleinfeld and you like being there and you're good at what you do even if they played the tape in court, Kleinfeld can say, yeah, I lied to him. Why? I had to take a shit. I wanted to get him out of my office. It's not committing perjury. He's not under oath. You're allowed to lie to another human being when you're talking to him. For whatever reason. That tape means shit. I mean, it doesn't, but by all legal technicalities, it's fucking worthless. Carlito's a sane person. He, he would never understand the intricates of legal technicalities. He'd react to it the way sane people would. Guys on the street are playing chess. People in a courtroom are basically playing Charlie McDennis. But even still, he's not screwing over Carlito, he's screwing over Norwalk. Dave's problem is, is he only sees it from the legal side of it and the law side of it. That's the only thing he actually fears. See, the boat incident, all of the things he does to cover his base, bringing the raft, bringing the oars, popping the raft, all that stuff he's leaving behind is for the law. He doesn't give a shit what the mob knows. He wants the mob to know he whacked Tony T. He wants to send them a message. Don't fuck with me. Help me! No! You tell me how it feels! With the fucking... Ah! With the fucking... Ah! Crabs coming out of your... Dave never really betrayed Carlito, but he is on a path of self-destruction and is dragging Carlito with him. Carlito does need to cut ties with Dave, but again, I'm leaving in a couple of months. What do I care? And had Carlito not fucked Dave over by taking the bullets out of his gun, he would have killed Vinny. That would be the last two people... Vinny and Frankie, who actually cared about Tony Tagliucci. Carlito could make it off to the Bahamas, and all of Tagliucci's businesses, both legitimate and illegitimate, would just go to the next guy in line. The next guy would just step up and inherit his stuff. Yeah, they might get Kleinfeld just to make a point out here on the streets, but we don't really know Carlito was on that boat. Now, nah, who gives a fuck? We got... Tony T's construction contracts or his garbage business or whatever it is he pretends to legitimately do. We got all his Coke customers. Just the next capo in line is going to get it. So really, Carlito would have been safe. If it really came down to it, Dave would sell Carlito out to save his own ass because that's the number one rule. And that's all I got to say about Carlito's way. And Center Ranter's review. Center Ranter slash Bully Whisper. It's a great channel. If you uh, haven't been checking, it, checking out, it out, definitely check it out. If you're, especially if you're a Sopranos fan or really any kind of mob movie fan at all. It's a great channel. So I hope he's not done with this. And get into some fucking Sons of Anarchy. I really want to see some Center Ranter Sons of Anarchy videos. But anyway, till next time. As the street says, Eat shit and die, Ricky! I say, Eat shit and live. And with that, my Puerto Rican ass is out of here. Now all of you, get the fuck out now before I get too mad to turn back. All y'all, now get the fuck out. Come on, you motherfuckers. Get the fuck out. Randy, you tuning son of a bitch. Don't fucking practice, Randy! Come on, Morris, you fucking genius! Get the fuck up and get the fuck out of here! God damn it!